Hello there, so today we're going to take a quick look at the relative velocity equation, which is this fella right here, u1, u2, v2, v1. So this is actually a shortcut to calculate uh, equations, uh, sorry, calculate equations, calculate velocities of the objects before and after. So before and after. So you don't need to use your good old momentum conservation equation, m1, u1, m2, u2, m1, v1, m2, v2. Firstly, that's very long, but you notice how we don't need mass at all to calculate velocities? Okay, so actually we don't need this one, so it's like a shortcut. But there's a catch. You can only use this equation if your collision is elastic. So look carefully in the question, make sure you check, is it elastic or inelastic? If they didn't say, don't assume it's elastic, you did check with this equation or otherwise. Okay, so let's take a look at the shortcut equation, shortcut equation, uh, how we can make sense of it and where it comes from, so the origin story of this. Let's take a look. Okay, so what are we actually, what does this uh, term mean, u1, u2 and all that? Basically, you are finding the approach speed before. So the approach speed, we can calculate with u1 minus u2 and separation is v2 minus v1. Uh, basically, approach means how if there's two objects moving like that or moving together, how fast are they getting closer to each other? Separation means how fast are they getting away from each other? So let's say you have two objects. One is rolling at some speed. This is object one, object two. Let's see, choose a number. I like five. So five meters per second. This one, the second one, let's say it's just sitting there, just chilling at rest. So, without thinking about the formula at all, how fast are these two getting closer to each other? Five, oh? Because one's not moving, so they're getting closer at five meters per second. So you can say your approach speed is just five meters per second. Now, if you want to use the formula to calculate, basically it's u1 minus u2. So u1 will be five minus zero, and that is five. They're the same thing. So you can think of it just logically, just trying to think how fast are they getting closer. But the equation u1 minus u2 is basically the same thing. Just that it will be convenient when you have negative signs later. Anyway, so these two collide. Boom! Explosion. And then, let's say one stops moving. Number one now stops moving. So v1 is zero, stops moving. And v2 goes away from v1. I'm just making up numbers. I'm, I don't know if it's actually momentum conserved or not. So let's say it moves at 5 meters per second. So then, same question. Without thinking about the maths, how fast are these two getting further away from each other? Just 5. Yep. So 5 meters per second. And if you think of the equation, you see where I'm going? V2 minus V1. V2 is to the five, uh, to the right, 5. V1 is just 0, so it's still 5. Okay, so things to note. For this system to work, everything to the right has to be positive. So to the right, you have plus 5. To the right, you have plus 5. And then everything to the left will be negative. Note how... The speed of approach here is the same as speed of separation. So this is what we call an elastic collision. This is how we can test. Okay? Elastic collision. Because approach at 5, separate at 5. Alright, so this is a simple case. What if it's something slightly different now? What if they are moving um, towards each other? One's not at rest now. Okay? So let's say they are moving at two meters per second, then uh, object number two is moving at three meters per second. That's U2. Ooh. So how fast are they moving towards each other? Probably quite fast. Why? Because two, object two, is moving at two meters per second. If object one was not moving, it's just like that. But now they're both moving, so they're actually moving towards each other. A speed of approach is much more than 2 or 3 meters per second. 
So if you think about it, their approach speed should be both at together from say 5 meters per second because they're getting closer towards each other at uh, 2 plus 2 plus g kind of thing. But if you want to use the formula to think about it, how are we going to think about it? u1 minus u2. Now remember the signs matter. Anything to the right is positive. Okay, so positive 2. Anything to the left is negative. So now we have 2 minus what's u2? Negative 3, which then gives us 5. Ah, so you see what's happening here? You can think of the math, but you can also think of objects moving towards each other. Okay, what's going to happen after? Let's say they move away from each other. So then V1 will be square number 4. Then V2, let's say move where? To the 3 lah, 3. 3 meters per second. So 1 and 2. Okay. So firstly, without thinking about the formula, how fast are they moving away from each other? What's the speed? One is moving 4 meters per second to the left. The other one is moving 3 meters per second away. So total should be 7 meters per second speed of separation. Now let's check the, for the formula V2 minus V1. So V2, oh, signs, positive, negative. So V2 will be 3 minus, going to the left, negative 4, which gives a total of 7. Then we see, hmm, something's not quite right with the values I picked here because uh, the separation speed after is more than the separation speed before. So you can say it's not elastic and probably not logical as well, unless the mass suddenly changed. But you get the point. So we can test out uh, systems of collision, whether they're elastic or not, just by plugging in values into these equations. Okay? Now the last funny bit. What if you have another system of sphere? One is moving away at a speed of, to the right, at a speed of 5 meters per second. The other one is moving at a speed of 5 meters per second. Something happens, maybe. Then they keep moving at a speed of 5 meters per second and 5 meters per second. <laughs> it's kind of a strange one. But what is the speed of appro uh, approach? Do they even approach each other at all? Not really. Because see, there's two. They both move at 5 meters per second. So they're not approaching each other. They're just rolling. So you can say the approach speed is 0. If you actually calculate it, U2, U1 minus U2 will be 5 minus minus what? 5 minus 5 only. Both are going to the right. So both are positive. Zero? It's kind of a strange question. But the same thing happens for the separation. They are not getting any further away from each other. So separation is also 0 meters per second. So actually nothing happens. There's no collision because they don't hit each other. They're just, they're not getting further. They're not getting closer. They're just rolling. Okay, so... That's it for the first part, just like looking at how to make sense, physical sense of this uh, relative speed equation. So if they give you a passive question like this, if two spheres collide across the lines, blah, 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 what, which equation must be correct if the collision is perfectly elastic? Now remember our equation, we have our own u1, u2, and v2, v1, anything to the right is positive. Anything to the left is negative. So if we rewrite our equation, u1 minus u2, v2 minus v1, we'll need to take into account their signs. So for example, first sphere, sphere 1 is positive. Ooh, moving to the left, negative. Moving to the right, positive, positive. Then you fill it into our equation. So we will have u1 which is positive now this blue color i used to show that it's their u1 i'm plugging into our equation now minus u2 so negative 2 goes to v2 positive minus positive v1 so if you see in the list of answers you should choose no space to write so i'm going to sneak over here you should choose the one that says u1 plus u2 equals to v2 minus v1 this is with their unknown velocities all plugged in. 
Okay, so our equation, plug in the signs based on whatever diagram they throw you, and then you'll find the correct equation. Now, some of you have been wondering, we've used this equation to test elastic collision and whatnot, but where does it actually come from? Well, I need to warn you first, please brace yourselves because there's going to be some little bit of math coming. It's not that hard, it's based on uh, uh, stuff that we have seen before. So let's take a look. First up, let's look at conservation of momentum, something we are kind of familiar with. Make sure you remember this formula or can make sense of it. It's kind of long, let's group stuff up a bit. So let's say I have M1U1. Let's put all the ones to one side. Okay, so M1V1 equals to, on the other side we have uh, negative M2U2 and then M2 V2. Ooh, still very long. Let's group the M's. So factorize our M. I have U1 minus V1 equals 2. On the other side, let's take out the negative. So negative M2 U2 minus M2. Oops. Sorry, sorry. Take out the M as well because very long. So let's take out M2 u2 take out minus minus so become v2 okay i think that's it that's all let's look at the next bit okay then we have kinetic energy conservation basically the kinetic energy total kinetic energy before equals to total kinetic kinetic energy after the collision so we have something like this huh? if you plug everything in wow so long Let's simplify a bit. If you multiply each term by 2, you can all these halves are basically gone. Okay, multiply every term by 2. Then we do the same thing. Let's group up all the ones on the same side. So I have m1 u1 squared uh, minus m1 v1 squared equals 2. On the other side, all the 2s. Negative m2 u2 squared plus m2 v2 squared. Ooh, let's take out the masses, factorize a bit. So you have u2 squared, u1 squared, sorry, minus v1 squared. On the other side, let's take out a negative. Then we have u2 squared minus v2 squared. This looks very familiar from the thing just now. Hmm, now the final step. So you have momentum, we found that. You have kinetic energy, found that as well. Notice how similar the pattern is. So the point of this whole uh, proof is that you want to find a way to get rid of the mass. We only want to care about velocity. Very convenient, ma. And the second thing to remember is this: uh, the kinetic energy formula is only for elastic because we assume no kinetic energy is lost. So you can use the half mv square to calculate the total kinetic energy. So let's see, what we can do is we divide momentum by kinetic energy. So that's like um, writing out Kalfein equation 1 divided by 2. So this is 1, la, 1 divided by 2. What do we get? Let's write it out. So we have m1 u1 minus v1 equal over something goes to on the right side m2 u2 minus v2 and the bottom is all the kinetic energy terms so we have m1 u1 minus v1 then negative m2 u2 squared minus v2 squared nice look how we can just cancel out the masses now m1 over m1 is gone Negative M2 over negative M2 is gone. All that's left is this beautiful stuff down there to rearrange. Okay, now let's rearrange it. Alright, so rewrite a bit one more time in blue. U1 minus V1 over stuff. U2 minus V2 over stuff. Now think about how the bottom term can be split up into two brackets. 
factorize just to use a bit of remember a bit of maths from uh, IG or SPM so let's see two bracket multiply what do you get what 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 two do you have to multiply to get u1 square minus v1 square ding 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 ding, ding back ding, ding, time lapse time zoom oh yes so you can if you think a bit of your quadratic equations and those kind of stuff so if you multiply u1 plus v1 and u1 minus v1 you would get uh you open the bracket you will get u1 square minus v1 square so you can do the reversal from one record square so become two same thing on the right side if you uh, factorize it you get u2 plus v2 times u2 minus v2 looks like we can cancel more stuff out okay so remember the top part also is in a bracket so u1 v1 is cancelled out u2 v2 is also cancelled out hmm so what's left? Let's take a look. Dun, 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 last bit. Go to the right side. Everything cancel out. What is left is the two terms at the bottom. This fella and this fella left. Huh. That looks interesting. So what we have left is just u1 plus v1 equals to u2 plus v2. Mm, that looks kind of like our relative speed equation but not quite yet it has minus so now we move all the u's together so we have u1 minus u2 goes to v2 minus v1 Ta -da! so that's your relative speed equation that we have been looking at so remember it comes from conservation of momentum and kinetic energy with the condition that it has to be elastic then you divide both to get rid of the mass I should make a note here. We divide to rid mass. Because it would be convenient if we didn't have to use mass to calculate. And then in the end, we get that uh, relative velocity equation. So that's the origin story for today, where this came from, how to make sense of it. Hopefully that was helpful.